Hi, and welcome to this week's look at the major news stories affecting the market so far. And we're going to start with currencies and we're going to look at cable that's sterling against the US dollar. And in fact, it's fallen to month lows. So Wednesday and Thursday morning saw the rate fall below 1 spot 27 for the first time since July the 6th. There's a number of factors behind this. We've got rising bond yields and the, the downgrade of the US rating by Fitch which we'll come on to in a second. And also there was strong data on the ADP labor market. That's the number of jobs excluding agricultural sectors. And that increased by more than 300,000 over the month. And we also look at the market expectations of news from the Bank of England, who published their interest rate around lunchtime on Thursday. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see what is said more than what actually happens. Everybody pretty much expecting a 0.25% rate hike, the 14th consecutive rise. Uh, and that's also on top of pretty disappointing forecasts for the UK economy. Now, if we take a look at the chart and have a look at some technical analysis on that chart, and the summer peaks formed a head and shoulders pattern. Now the neckline, which could be drawn through the median line of the ascending channel, has already been broken after weak rebound towards the end of July. But the pound may be supported in the coming days. Now, that'll be the minutes and if there are encouraging language and wording being used by the Bank of England and members of the committee that decide on the interest rates. We're also looking at a block of support formed in the area of 126 from the low of June and the lower border of the channel um, and the standardised moving average over a 100 day period. Nobody's quite sure what's going to happen. As I say, what is said about the interest rate in the UK, probably more important than the figure itself, but do get ready for some bursts of volatility in the coming days and weeks when it comes to cable so don't forget your risk management techniques okay so we touched on it briefly a moment ago but Fitch has downgraded the US credit rating now the US credit rating has decreased one level from AAA where it's been with Fitch since 1994 to AA plus there was a warning about this a couple of months ago but it still came as a pretty big surprise so why have they done it well it's due to the high and growing debt burden in the States. We spoke about this earlier in the spring, the debt ceiling cancellations and last minute decisions causing uncertainty and obviously increasing the country's debt burden. Now, Fitch analysts expect the state budget deficit to increase to 6.3% of GDP by the end of 2023. Now, that's up from 37 in 2022, so quite a significant increase. They've also said that tightening credit conditions, weakening business investment and slowing consumption will push the US into a moderate recession in Q4 2023 and Q1 2023. 24. It's worth noting we've had the US has been downgraded once before. That was by Standard and Poor's back in 2011, which did cause the stock market to fall a reasonably significant amount. Now, obviously, and not surprisingly, it pushed the S&Ps off the high of the year, dropping below that psychological level of 4,500. Now, there are some support factors that could slow any S&P fall. We're looking at 4,450 being a former resistance level could well come into play and the median line of the ascending channel. Now, we know that AI and tech stocks have been, have been very, very positive, but this sort of downgrade could have quite a significant impact on the markets in the States. Um, we've already seen the president come out and you know, members of the FOMC come out and say they think this is you know, wrong and unfair and incorrect, but pretty significant piece of news so far this week. Okay, we now turn our attention to the commodity markets and gold has started August with a sell-off despite some very bullish headlines flying around. Now, Monday, gold was trading above $1,970. Come Thursday morning, that's fallen down to $1,935, despite these bullish headlines in the media. So what's being said? Well, Dow Jones said in the first half of 2023, demand for gold from central banks amounted to 387 tonnes. That's the largest demand for, for quite some time. And JP Morgan analysts state the price will reach $2,000 by the end of 2023 and expect to see new records in 2024 when interest rates start to fall. And UBS seem to agree with them, saying the price will be under pressure from time to time, but use price breakdowns below 1950 so that's $1,950 to buy for the longer term, but it's down. 
So what's going on? Well, there's a resistance block from 1980 level and the upper border of the descending channel looks powerful. That's in red on the chart. We're also seeing some support levels though. So we banded twice from 1950 in July. Has that gone? You know, we, we, we're looking at it being under that currently, but that may well come back into play. And also, 1,940 level, which corresponds to the 50% increase from low to high in July. And also take a look at the median channel line, could well offer it some support as we move forwards. You will see on the charts, there's quite a few false breakouts, so it's not immediately clear what's going to happen. But certainly the media and analysts remain pretty bullish, despite the pullback that we've seen so far this week. Okay, finally, we're going to take a look at equity with the ongoing reporting season in the States. And that's AMD. Now, they were on the rise after their report. Uh, Tuesday, the financial statement came out post-market. Um, positives from their financial statement was EPS of 58 cents per share, uh, expecting at 57. Uh, Q2 revenue was at 5.36 billion US dollars. The expectation there was 5.3. So very, very slightly above expectations. Still a positive. Negatives, though, were also there. Uh, data center revenue fell 11% year on year. And PC revenue was actually down 54% year on year. A lot of that being slated due to uh, the end of pandemics, etc. But quite a significant drop there. Uh, CEO Lisa Su's comments re-AI hot topic at the moment, of course, attracted quite a bit of positive attention. Um, she basically stated by 2027, the market for AI processors in data centers would be greater than 150 billion US dollars. And in Q2, AMD's AI business grew by seven times. Figures were okay, some negatives in there. Quite a positive statement, obviously, from the CEO. Post-market trading, the share price jumped by 3% in after hours. So initially, taken pretty positively. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to last very long. And in fact, if we take a look at the chart, that does show us some mixed signals. We look on the bullish side, where the share price still rising in the ascending channel just about. And we've got a fairly strong support level at 110. That's $110 per share. Bearish, well pre-market Wednesday, the price fell and that continued through the main trading session. In fact, closing at 109.35 Wednesday night, which you quickly spot, of course, is below that 110 support level I've just mentioned. There is resistance also at the 122 level, which is the low of the bear bar back on June the 13th. So a little bit of volatility creeping in here, particularly post pre-market. Uh, Market Watch have stated that the average target price is $137.50 per share. So analysts seem to still have a positive feeling moving forwards, um, but I expect there to be some volatility as the market settles. So once again, risk management techniques need to be in play. We wish you luck with your trading the weekend. Bye for now.